Hello, thank you for this opportunity. And I will try to use my 10 minutes to share everything I want to share with you today. We will talk about landscape intervention in different contexts. And of course, we have a general context, which is a Ukrainian context. And the products we've been working on, those which are underway or those which have already been implemented. And I would like to share my experience of us working with the context. I represent Kotsuba Landscape Architecture Studio. So we specialize in public spaces. We have extensive experience of 14 years. These are different typologies of these spaces, parks, uh, squares, um, educational institutions, uh, and it, with each different type of typology, we have different uh, plans. And of course, the context also plays an important role in all of that. It's important to know how to interact with it, how to respond uh, to it. And uh, I will break it into several categories, because if you talk about some new buildings um, this is something which is in the in the field or there were some warehouses for example it means that there is no really context as such this is a basket project well you can see new housing there was nothing there as well some warehouses probably but then they were uh, pulled uh, down but you can see nature you can see the Dnipro river and architects uh, they really wanted to have um, access uh, to water for people. It was very important for us to include it in our project. Also, to speak about um, inner yards, it was also very important for us to reflect the, the nature of the space. That is why we use this design. It's basically resembles surfing on waves, children running around on those hills because the, these are part of these hills are parts of playgrounds for children. And in the future, uh, we the plan is to have these sand pits, which is part of this residential complex, and all of that resembles beaches. It is really nice. Uh, this is something which is a good way of preservation of the nature of this uh, location. We have to talk about the density, because we know that if these are some locations where we have already some buildings um, there, Tatris Hall is one of such uh, projects. So here you can see very many buildings surrounding it. So we try to uh, consider the context and um, green spaces because we have uh, have trees there, we have linden trees, and that is why we decided also to use these trees. And we do not really see any clear borders. So this is like uh, that. This is really part of the space itself. It means that we do not uh, do have any delineation from um, the surroundings. Also, here you can see some space, and here you can see some some uh, some place with grass, and you see the sun shining, the sunset, it goes down on the horizon, and this is something that you can observe. And the next part of the context uh, is that uh, in many places in Kiev, but there are new construction sites uh, on the territory of previously industrial areas, but it's not about demolishing everything, but it's when some parts uh, of the buildings remain. For example, this is uh, a former motorcycle factory, and uh, there's um, the chimney, which actually um, creates uh, the spirit of this area, which uh, well used to be there when this was an industrial area, and uh, then this is this in innovative innovation park, and uh, these old elements they are integrated into the new environment, and we reflected this and the materials uh, for organization of space, this character of. Uh, 
industrial past, uh, which is uh, well reflected in the materials, uh, the metal, the concrete, uh, uh, the brick, and uh, it all works um, uh, very well and in combination with the modern architecture. The spirit of the place is felt very well. and. Uh, also, this industrial um, character, this modern architecture, are supplemented by this atmosphere of the green forest, of uh, the greenery, which is included in here, and they play certain functions, uh, the functions of play, uh, recreational functions, so people who live here or who work here, they can uh, um, relax there. So this is a very multifaceted space, which has its authenticity and its identity, which combines the past and the present and uh, uh, the present day life. Uh, so it's uh, it has its own face, so to say. The next part, this, uh, these are, are the things which we face most frequently when working with the urban spaces uh, and streets. This is our Soviet legacy. I'm very happy that uh, a lot has been talked about it here at the forum, about uh, the architecture, about what to do with that. The figures are that more than 80% or 90% of all spaces we use were designed back in the Soviet times. and. Um, this is this way of how it was uh, uh, done was not um, democratic it was quite authoritarian and the ideology that um, was used there doesn't uh, correspond to the system of values that we have right now we are a democratic country and we have decommunized the streets uh, the, the street names uh, the uh, settlement names uh, people have uh, well been trying to get rid of everything uh, Russian and everything Soviet, but in architecture, a lot is still remaining. For example, all these typical buildings, like the uh, this is uh, the administrative building in Poltava, and many other cities have the same well structure of the building. So the space is very formal. People don't use it. All these these people have a lot of needs. The sociological surveys show that there's a lot of need for the students to have a, a space to to uh, relax so that the solution is to deformalize the space so we are um, stepping away from this um, well function of the solemnity of this building and we're trying to fill the space with uh, some functions so this is the human centered design and instead of uh, having this uh, empty uh, useless space we can have uh, a very um, uh, lively space so by adding these uh, children's uh, spaces because they make everything look uh, uh, less uh, uh, formal the same as uh, we worked with the Soborny Maidan uh, Soborny Square in Zutomer so it seemed to be uh, a kind of an unknown space for parades uh, and things like that uh, it's a big project it's important to start from uh, some um, spaces for children and teenagers because children are the ones who take up the changes uh, um, first of all and then they bring life to these uh, empty and dead spaces and um, that's how it can be used next slide There should be another slide after that. Something doesn't seem to work. That's weird. Well, we're researching this topic and uh, well, the slide was about a movie. Two years ago, together with Minimal Movie Company, we researched this topic of how these Soviet spaces uh, influence people. And uh, we uh, made these four minute videos. Uh, you can find that it's landscape architecture reconsidering the uh, future. Uh, 
of the totalitarian past. And uh, when it comes to these projects, the first thing is to reconnect people with the space by helping in involving them into the reconceptualization of these spaces and then discussing various topics like we have been discussing at the forum like biodiversity and climate change and maybe also tackling other challenges which exist there but the first thing is to restore the connection that has been lost and then solving uh, other problems and the last block which um, is characteristic of the cities So the, these spaces, they have several layers and working with uh, this uh, square in Chernivtsi. Now it's the territory which has been used for cars. And uh, we have seen many layers here. We have the Soviet layer here, but then we will dig in deeper. And uh, we're looking at different solutions and uh, thinking about the nature of their appearance. And then we got back to this well, moment of um, when this uh, square was uh, created. So it started being a very lively uh, place. And as Mikhail mentioned, during the first day of uh, uh, the forum and that we should go back to the future so if it used to be very functional so let's go back to that functional the, um, solution and uh, uh, we can reverse some decisions if they were taken from the ideological point of view and not from the point of view of how to improve the urban um, environment from the point of view of the user and uh, the questions uh, on uh, how to well get rid of this uh, street here so we can make a pedestrian space here and not only on the square itself but uh, in the whole historical center keeping public transportation and adding the functions uh, which are characteristic of uh, the pedestrian spaces like the green areas and uh, areas uh, for relaxation uh, uh, for the terraces uh, and uh, that will allow also for restoring the lost identity and uh, restore the original uh, idea behind uh, the, this area. Have I used all my time or do I still have some time? I wanted to add that these processes, uh, well, just unlike some Soviet approaches, uh, with the involvement of uh, the community, with uh, um, the work of the users, so these spaces have to be created uh, in connection with the users uh, and for the users, and uh, that will be reflected in how they will be working after uh, the project is implemented. So this has to be a democratic process. Um, this is what we are well aiming at, and we have already started doing that, and that's how we have already created many spaces in Ukraine. Thank you very much.